Hey everybody, Sean here, and I hope you're doing well. Today we'll look at a man named Duncan Smith, so let's jump right in. If you aren't familiar with Duncan Smith, he and his wife Kate are presidents of Catch the Fire. That's right, the ministry that came from the Toronto Madness with people like Heidi Baker, Bill Johnson, and many involved with the NAR movement today. And please remember that we are never determining who is or isn't saved when we look at these people. We are simply examining what they are claiming or teaching and comparing it to what the Bible says. Because we have been warned in several verses about false teachers leading people astray, especially in the last days. If Jesus spoke about this 2,000 years ago, how much farther along has the deceit really come? So today we'll look at some clips from a Sid Roth video that was posted on April 19th, 2021. And I said, I said to them, guys, you have more fire than I have. You're so in love with Jesus. Why? I want that. And they chuckled and they said, oh, they knew my name by this point. They said, oh, Duncan. That's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So apparently we need a special baptism to have more joy for God? It sounds like the joy I had when I first got saved. Nine months later, I was at a church, my church in Oxford, and we had a speaker from Uganda. He preached on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I ran forward. He laid his hands on me. And suddenly, as I began to tell God how amazing he is and, and, and magnify him, suddenly bubbling out of me came this, I realized I was speaking in a completely foreign language that I didn't understand, but it felt so good, Sid, and I couldn't stop. Now, there's some that teach and preach that when you get this so-called secondary baptism of the Holy Spirit, the evidence is that you speak in tongues. So, this would be when he got that baptism, or is it? Three days later, and a man was there who was 27 years old. He said at the end, if you'd like the Holy Spirit, stand up and put your hands up. Wait, didn't he just get the Holy Spirit? My friends were falling and I could hear people laughing and crying and being touched by the Lord. But I started to feel this electricity coming down me and then up from my toes and all over my whole body. So what's actually happening here? Is this a third baptism now? I'm so confused. It's interesting that both Bill Johnson and Todd White talk about this electricity and that it's not a good feeling. It's painful, causes them to scream, and yet they say this is our loving, gentle Lord doing this to them. And I've been praying, Lord, let me be like Enoch, who walked with you and was not for nine months. And suddenly as the fire intensified, and I felt like I was being electrocuted with millions of volts of electricity. Well, that sounds like fun. And my breathing was, became rapid, then I could barely breathe, and then I suddenly realized, Sid, I think I'm going to be was not, and I'm not ready. I, I want to get married, I want to have kids. <laughs> and I just started to scream loudly, stop, Lord, stop, please, what stop. You mean the, the power was so, so intense? So intense, I thought I'm going to just rip apart. Does this sound like God? Did any believer in the Bible have this happen to them? But now he's going to talk about a miracle, and we'll just let this play out to hear it all in context. Uh, how about the lady that was deaf oh. and mute? That was amazing. I was ministering in Kyrgyzstan in the remote Tanshan Mountains and um, the edge of the Himalayas. And as I was, again, I was ministering to probably three or 400 leaders and pastors. There was this lady in the, in the crowd as I was speaking on the importance of forgiveness. She kept going like this. I thought, well, she's a little bit strange. So I kept trying to preach without looking too much in her direction. Well, when I got off the platform and I started to minister to folks and laying hands on people, I turned around and came face to face with her. 40 years old, she's standing, I found out from my interpreter, she's standing with her uh, babushka grandmother, as they called them in Kyrgyzstan, and her 16-year-old daughter. After six attempts of the most valiant attempts of prayer that I can give, surrounded by the crowd watching, hoping, nothing happened. And everyone's face was like, and including most of all mine. But suddenly, as I went for the seventh go, um, put my finger in her ear, she suddenly went, ah. So I put my second finger in the other ear, she went, ah. like this. 
These stories are so dramatic with so many non-essential details to make them more interesting. And the Lord said, spit on her tongue. Oh no. And of course, right now in all of this environment that we're in, out there. <laughs> but in that moment, I was like, Lord, how do I do that? I mean, if I spit, try to spit in her, you know, tongue, I might hit her in the eye and she's not blind. <laughs> really? That's what you were thinking? <laughs> but it might be after that. But I remember Jesus loading his fingers and touching the man's tongue. So I spat on my fingers, which were now loaded, and I went, and she went, as if she didn't really want to, and I put my slimy fingers on her doubly slimy tongue, but she was instantly set free and began speaking for the first time in 40 years. And her mother and her daughter were just freaked out. And the Lord said, tell us to say something normal. So through the interpreter I did, and she turned to her mother, and the interpreter said it afterwards, and said, Mom, when are you going to take me and my daughter home for dinner? I'm starving hungry. And I just, and the crowd went ballistic with joy. And I thought, why would she say that? Her first words ever. And then the Lord said to me, well, she's been trying to tell her mother that for 40 years. <laughs> that makes no sense. She's been trying to tell her mother to take her and her daughter home for 40 years. Her daughter is only 16 and 40 years ago was when she was born. What a bunch of nonsense. And now we're going to hear yet another story. You had the high privilege of seeing the Holy Spirit, his form. What did you see and what effect did it have on you? John and Carol invited me up onto the platform one Sunday morning and they said, Duncan, we're going to anoint you as an evangelist to the nations. Well, there's the first red flag. Being anointed by John and Carol are not. And here's what happened. They laid hands on me. I went flying. I was on the floor, knocked over by the power of God. Once again, when did we ever see the apostles lay hands on people? And the result was that they flew across the room. But as I lay there, I went into a vision instantly. I saw a vast African plain, and on the far right hand side, I saw a tiny figure of a man on the edge of the horizon. The instant I saw him, said, he came right up to me. And the only way I can describe him is that he was like a man of fire. He was like a fiery figure. From his waist upwards, he was like liquid molten metal, but not metal like we know. It's indescribable. But from his waist downwards, he was like fire. And he looked at me and I was terrified. And he smiled, the most loving smile. And then he went <laughs> and he touched me in my chest and he just lit me and I went ballistic. And I just, my whole body was burning. For months, I was burning. When I would preach, people would start burning. When I touch people, they would burn. My wife didn't want to be under the covers with me because I was okay. so hot. And if you believe that story, I feel really sad. So after this vision, he was burning for months and other people would start burning if he even touched them. This is either a made up story or it's a different spirit. Take your choice, but it doesn't sound like anything our loving God would do to his children. Here's what we're going to do. I want to make sure you can handle this fire and I'm going to have him pray for this fire because we're living in a time where he does not have to put hands on you. He has to just speak it. No, thanks. I think I'll pass on that prayer. And how does it end? Of course, with a product you can buy where you can learn how to enter into face to face encounters with Jesus to receive the power to begin to live like him. Yeah, these guys are a dime a dozen and unfortunately, people that may be truly seeking Jesus are being led astray. We'll leave it here for today, but as always, leave your thoughts and comments below, and until next time, take care and God bless.